Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. The interview barrage has begun. Like politicians on the campaign trail, Ian and the gang have been out there kissing babies, promising that they've heard the community and they're going to do more. So in this video, we are going to see what they have said about one thing in particular. That is the new hero class, the Evoker. And maybe, just maybe, some other news regarding our more classic classes. So let's get into it. The Evoker, for those that don't know, is the new hero class coming to World of Warcraft with Dragonflight. It's a special race class combo, meaning only a Dragonkin can be an Evoker, and only an Evoker can be a Dragonkin. Now, for those new to WoW, the term hero class may be a little confusing. Does this mean it's doing just plain out more crazy damage than anything else? Oh yes. But, to be fair, that's nothing actually to do with being a hero class, it's simply that if people are going to swap, well, it better be damn good reason to swap, i.e. it's just plain overpowered. But, back to hero classes. The term comes from heroes in Warcraft 3. In WoW, it normally means the class has a unique experience attached to it, like the Death Knights with the Lich King or Demon Hunters awakening in the prison. On a far more simple term, and the way I like to think about the hero class, they're really classes that were born for a role. They were classes born for combat, born for action. That's their RP. They were literally created or born or whatever into a specific role. Whereas, let's say, a warrior could have just been a simple guard protecting their home village and then adventure called. Or a priest. You could have been tending the sick and then all of a sudden a war happens and you're thrust into the front lines. A hunter maybe just been out there gathering food for the tribe. They were born not for necessarily adventure in danger, but eventually they were called to it. So that's roughly what a hero class is. Really, in game it just means you start at a higher level than other classes and you get some sort of fancy personalised intro. But at times there are restrictions that come up with hero classes. You may have to have another character already at a certain level or you may only have one per realm, and so on. Now, people have been wondering, look, it's like 2022, Blizz. Are you still going to have these restrictions with the new Evoker class? Well, here is what Brian Helenka said recently in an interview when talking about the Evoker. I want to get the specifics out because I know this will be a big deal. First, Drakthar, which is the name of the race that can be an Evoker, on the account has no restrictions other than having bought Dragonflight. Additional Jackta can only be created on a server where someone already has a level 50 character, and it's not already a Jackta Evoker. Initially, it's only going to be one Jackta per realm. Obviously, if you delete your Jackta, you can make a new one. Everybody gets to make a Jackta for the first time, but if you want to make a second one, eventually you'll need to have a level 50 of, of course, another class race and you can only create one per realm okay so I'm gonna break this down for my old man brain to keep it simple first buy dragonflight and you get your evoker no restrictions put it where you want fine obviously this needs to be said server restrictions are still going to apply if you have 50 characters you're already capped on a server then, yeah, it's time to have a serious chat with those characters and work out which one isn't pulling its weight. After your first evoker has been created, any others you wish to create can only be done on a server where you have an existing level 50 character. Obviously, that can't be an evoker. One restriction that doesn't exist, which is nice for new players, you're able to start Dragonflight, and if you don't have an existing character, you'll still be able to just create an evoker and play this brand new class. Because Let's be honest about this. If you're buying a game called Dragonflight, and there is a class in it that is specifically a dragon, and can do funky cool things, you kind of want to be able to play it. Not being able to, yeah, kind of sucks. So luckily, that restriction doesn't apply. If you're brand new to WoW, fancy playing the game, you can jump in and play an Evoker. And speaking of class restrictions, we have some interesting news on that front as well. Blizzard seemed to be relaxing the idea of class race restrictions. Further, in the interview with Brian, the question of any new class race combos coming up? Well, here is the response. 
yeah, you know, we kind of have this broad direction. I don't want to make any huge promises, but we kind of feel like we want to move towards a world where the race of a character is not a limiter for what they can or what they cannot become in World of Warcraft. We're working towards that, but not all classes have the same kind of content requirements. More of this will come out over time, but immediately in 10.0, we're going to be making rogues, mages, and priests available for all races. So anyone will be able to go out and make their sneaky Tauren rogue tiptoeing on their hooves all around. Yeah, the mine. Yeah, okay. <laughs> These will be introduced in 10.0, with general intentions for us to look at more options down the line. But immediately, in 10.0, you'll be able to change your rogue, your mage, and your priest for any race combination you want. Good news, everyone! This is really good news. We finally, finally are one step closer to the glorious Goblin Paladin dream. But joking aside, it's nice to see these restrictions slowly being lifted. I get it. I 100% get it. In a general sense, goblins are not seen, let's say, as a noble race with a code of honour and a sense of duty to protect others. Given the fantasy of a paladin, I'm just picking this one as an example, it's more than just a, oh, well, the class can be a warrior and it can be a priest, therefore, why can't it be a paladin? As I say, in the flavour, in the, the RP of that, a paladin is more than a sum of its parts. But yes, whereas goblins as a whole are perceived as not having this paladin, like, chivalry code, they just, they don't agree with that. It's just silly. There's no profit in it. Who isn't to say that your goblin isn't the noble one? After, let's say, the fall of Kazan, and being exposed to the suffering and the wars going on in wider Azeroth, you change. You pledge yourself to being a paladin, to help others. It's those personal journeys that make role-playing games and D&D and so on special. Personally, I would love to have another page on the character select screen that lets you pick and just a tiny bit of flavour about your character. Maybe where you were born, if it was even on Azeroth at all, while you picked your class. Were you, let's say if you're a rogue, were you an assassin in employment to the crown? Or to some sort of, you know, gold baron? Were you uh, just a thief trying to survive and make a living? And then when you interact with other characters, let's say you're an alliance rogue, you into SI7, they might bring up some of that flavour text in the background, just for a little bit of immersion. You know, let's say you can speak to a member of SI7, they're like, I remember when I got you from the gutter. You were just a thief stealing things, or if you were an assassin, like you were an assassin, we were sent to kill you, and we decided not to. It doesn't sound like a lot, but those little things just grab you and bring you into games like WoW, into any RPG. Now granted, that may be a step way too far for WoW, but even if that never happens, it's good to see we're getting more race class combos, and more of a chance for players to be the character of the class that best suits them. Because let's be honest, okay, let, let's just put this out there. If you are a Tauren rogue, you are literally probably the greatest rogue that has ever lived. Because if you can disappear while being a 10 foot tall cow, then you must be rolling natural 20s every time. But that's enough from me. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and I'll catch you all in the next video. Laters everyone.